Today we're going to be talking about the Autel Evo 2 that was announced earlier this week at CES. Now if you were following this release you'd have seen that they've announced three different models, one of which has a massive 48 megapixel 8K resolution camera. Now you might be thinking that is massively more than any other drone on the market and on paper it is. However, in my opinion, not all is as it seems and there's a little bit of a play at words going on here with regards to the actual megapixel count and they're actually taking advantage of something Sony introduced in some of their sensors a few years ago. And whilst it technically is 48 megapixel. That is not to say it is exactly the same as something like a Sony a7R 3 and the reality is there's a tiny bit of trickery going on here and what we're going to do is take a close look at that and try and explain to you what I think they're actually doing. Okay, so as I said, this week Autel have announced the Evo 2 and this is going to come in three versions. There is a dual model with a thermal camera and I'm not going to do too much on that in this video, but it is going to be available and it is very similar to the Mavic 2 Dual that DJI produce and it is basically an enterprise model with a flare imaging sensor on board as well. There is a pro model which has a one inch 20 megapixel camera. Now this is nice to see because they did announce after the original Evo that they intended to make a one inch model back then but it never actually happened. However now it has and the pro model of the Evo 2 as I said is one inch sensor 20 megapixel up to 6k video. Now having look at this in a little bit more detail they appear to be using the Sony IMX383 image sensor and this is the same sensor that Sony use in the RX100 version 7 and it should mean that it is a very very good camera. This is coupled to a new variable aperture f2.8 lens and it has a maximum resolution of 5472 times 3648. Now this pro model unit itself is exactly the same and it is just the camera that is different compared to the other models. Now Autel have said that you will also be able to swap the cameras on these models yourself as well so the base aircraft should remain the same and you would be able to simply swap out the camera modules and they actually show you how to do that in the instructions as well. Now that is pretty much as deep as I'm going to go onto the camera on this one but I have to say that the pro model does look to be a very nice version and it is as equal to the Mavic 2 as anything else out there. It also does allow 120 megabytes a second data rate with 10 bit recording too. So it is going to punch its weight there with the other models like the Mavic 2 Pro from DJI. Now alongside the Pro model they also announced the standard model but this is the one that's caught all of the headlines and this is the one that has the 48 megapixel 8K resolution camera. However this is actually the standard cheaper model and you might be wondering well how has this got a better camera than the Pro 1 inch model or say a better resolution than pretty much any other drone out there. Well the reality is I think that there's a little bit of marketing play going on here and I'm going to explain that in a minute and whilst technically it is 48 megapixel not all things are equal and it is not say better than a Sony a7R 3 Now if we look at the camera spec it is as I said 48 megapixel pixel 8k resolution at 24 frames a second it has up to 8000 times 6000 pixels and it is a half inch sensor which is pretty much the same size sensor as on a standard Mavic Pro or a Mavic 2 Zoom or the Skydio 2 as well. Now it still has the 120 megabytes date rate and it uses in my opinion the Sony IMX586 sensor. Now when you look into this in a little bit more detail something becomes apparent and they're using this thing called a quad Bayer filter and this is how I think they're actually getting the resolution that they're saying and in my opinion this is not a true 48 megapixel camera and the reality is it's actually still very similar to a 12 megapixel camera but it's taking advantage of a little bit of a trick that Sony introduced in their sensors. Now to be able to understand what a quad Bayer filter is you first need to understand how an image sensor works on a camera. Now the basics of this are as follows. The sensor 
picks up intensity of light. It doesn't actually pick up as standard what colour that light is. So think of your image sensor as buckets capturing that light. To be able to pick up the different colours, what they do is put a filter over the top of the sensor, and that is what's called the Bayer filter. And the way a standard camera sensor is set up is it has one blue, one red, and two greens. Now the reason there are two greens is we use green to be able to measure brightness, and it is how our eyes pick up how bright an image is. So the way the Bayer filter setup is, for one standard full pixel, it consists of two green, one blue, one red. Now, as I've said, if you think of it as four buckets with a different colour filter on top, and that then measures how bright that colour wavelength of light is. Now, a standard filter is simply one filter to one bucket. However, this is where the little bit of trickery is going on. What a quad Bayer filter does is instead of having one bucket below one colour filter, they actually put four smaller buckets below that same single colour filter. And it allows them to measure that colour in four different places rather than measure it in one. And whilst normally increasing a megapixel count on a sensor means more pixels and more light filters, the number of light filters on this is exactly the same as it is on say a 12 megapixel sensor but they're measuring it four different ways underneath that filter and this is how they're able to actually get this 48 megapixel resolution number and whilst technically there are 48 megapixels it is not the same as what you would have on something like a Sony a7R3 or a higher megapixel image because for every bucket they usually have their own filter over the top of it whereas this isn't the same number of color filters are in place but they're just putting smaller buckets beneath it to be able to measure that light differently. Now this is a trick that a couple of the phone manufacturers did a couple of years ago and it allows them to put some some fairly large crazy megapixel numbers on their cameras. Now whilst as I've said there are technically that many pixels it doesn't mean you're going to get that much detail and the way the camera is going to work is it is going to take all that image data and create that 48 megapixel image for you but it is not going to be the same as a true 48 megapixel sensor. Now this has been known about for quite some time and it was dug into quite in depth from the phone companies a few years ago and the overall consensus on this system is is whilst in certain very bright circumstances it can yield a better image especially when it's processed to 48 megapixel it is not equal to a true 48 megapixel image and actually if you take it in other circumstances such as low light it's actually much much, much worse than the standard 12 megapixel sensor that was usually on it. Now the way these sensors usually work is they actually have two modes. They have the traditional mode which is around 12 megapixels and it allows us to read it just like the sensor usually does as per the colour filters over the top and then it has this high resolution mode as well. So it's too early to understand really what Autel are going to be giving the people the options of on this but the chances are you're going to have the two modes available to select. So whilst this 48 megapixel image looks fantastic on paper, the reality is, in my opinion, it's a little bit of a cheat and it really is not true 48 megapixel. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what Autel are going to do with the video side of this, because whilst it is capable of 8K, you're going to have this processed 8K how is it going to behave in 4K or 1080p? Are they going to stick it back in that original mode like I was telling you about, which is traditionally 12 megapixels, and for instance 4K is about 8 megapixel, and that should yield better results than actually processing it down from this 48 megapixel image. Also, the chances are this sensor is going to be doing a hell of a lot of line binning to be able to 
process that data and produce that output as well and it's going to be able to be in, it's going to be interesting I should say to see how this behaves because as we've seen in the past cameras that do do binning don't react too well to it and it doesn't always come out very well and the guys who do do a bit of pixel peeping will see this stuff instantly now if you look at some of the footage out there that's been shown some of the effects of this quad bayer filter can already be seen lack of detail in the darks and the shadows as well as noise in those areas as well because at the end of the day the filter image size is still the same size as roughly the 12 megapixel one on say the mavic pro and the original evo it's just those actual image pixels below the filters that there's more of but at the end of the day you're trying to create resolution that isn't necessarily there now I'm not saying Autel are lying and I'm not saying that they are cheating. They are taking advantage of something that Sony introduced into these sensors about a year and a half ago. But I do think to label it 48 megapixel 8K is setting expectations very high and you might find some people get a little bit disappointed with the output once the drawbacks of this system come out and the reality is it isn't apples for apples it isn't equal and whilst you might look at the Mavic 2 Pro is at 20 megapixel or the Skydio 2 is at 12 the reality is this drone isn't so much more better than that it is just a different way of doing what it's doing and whilst in certain circumstances it might yield better results in others it's actually going to be worse and that is why they have their standard model at 48 megapixel and the one inch model at 20 with the pro because the pro is still probably going to produce a better output overall now, because this drone is nearly in production, all of the FCC data is up and you're actually able to take a look at some of the images internally. And this has yielded some interesting information. Now, the EVO 2 appears to have dumped the Umbrella H2 SoC and they've now moved over to the HI3559C. And that is by a completely different company. Now, this is a new SoC that is 8K capable and it allows the EVO 2 to be able to deal with this info that they're trying to get out of this Sony sensor. Now it does allow up to 120 megabits a second data rate but it should be added that that appears to be variable and that doesn't mean it's going to be 120 megabits all of the time. Looking over the rest of the drone I can't quite see what's going on with regards to the object avoidance systems because the images don't go that deep but I can see the main flight control setup and they appear to have moved over to the STM32H7 for their main flight controller SOC and you can see this next to the onboard SD card for data login and next to this you've then got the IMUs located for the main controller. Now this is all hard mounted and the reality is this board itself is probably soft mounted in the drone when it's assembled you just can't see it in this setup. Now the overall main board setup is very very nice and it actually looks very similar to some of the DJI models. On the top side you've got all of the video processing with that new SOC along with an 8 gigabyte NAND chip and then on the bottom looks like it's got all of the processing for the object avoidance system but I can't quite see what they're actually using. Looking at the power system that is on a separate board as well and it is kept well away from the main flight controller and GPS too so I don't see there being any problems there from a build point of view. Finally the GPS system is on a separate board again located at the top as well and there looks to be plenty of screening around that. Looking at the overall packaging for the Evo 2 it looks very nice I don't see anything that's potentially dodgy and the overall setup should yield some good results. Looking at the battery on this as well it's hard not to notice just how big this thing is. It is still 3S in total but it is over 7 amp and this is a very big battery for a drone of this size and that's where they're able to get this extended flight time from having used that but it is interesting that they have remained on a 3S pack. Now looking over the whole drone there are tons of changes compared to the original Evo 2, far more object avoidance cameras, a new object avoidance system and at this stage it's impossible to say how well this is going to work and while some of the reviews out there do show this the reality is until it gets into customers hands we're not really going to know what's going on but they've certainly upgraded it. Whether it needed that many cameras is another question but it's clear that there's a lot more onboard processing going on to be 
able to deal with this image but i doubt it's as much as say the skydio 2 is doing with its 4k 3d cameras that are looking in all directions now overall the evo 2 does look a nice drone and for me the one inch sensor 20 megapixel model would absolutely be the one to go for now as i've said i do think there's some marketing play going on with this 48 megapixel 8k resolution and it should raise alarm bells the second they're selling that for less than say the pro model with a smaller camera and again as i've said the reality is they're playing the same marketing trick here that a few phone manufacturers played last year and whilst it is technically 48 megapixel the reality is it's roughly a 12 megapixel sensor with that same filter on top and they've just increased the number of points to measure it technically though it is 48 megapixel, but it's not going to be the same as a, say, a Sony a7R 3 for instance. Um, but overall, that is pretty much it. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how this drone gets on. There is some CE markings on this as well, but we don't know at this time if it is going to be available in Europe, unlike the first one, which wasn't. It will be interesting to see if it does come. That is it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, please do subscribe. There's a link in the description of this video as well for some of the information on this quad bayer filter if you guys want to go out there and read up i will add that there is very hard to be a hundred percent certain on this stuff i'm trying to read through specs and things like that so i'm not going to say this is a hundred percent the case of what's happening i am personally 99 percent it is because there basically isn't a proper 48 megapixel sensor out there and all of the numbers line up on this one including the sensor numbers as well as the camera names and things like that please comment in the video and let me know what you think and uh, as i said please do subscribe and we'll do another video again soon